What's up guys, welcome back to Seize This Speed for another review and today I'm excited to say to the right side of me I have the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander and this is the Platinum model and it's four wheel drive. Let's get into it. So what is a Grand Highlander? The Grand Highlander is pretty much the Highlander for you if the, if the regular Highlander is a little bit too cramped. This car gives you a much more comfy third row seat. It's just a bigger Highlander and with different powertrain options. Based on the trim you get, it could also, it could be pretty efficient or it could be pretty quick or you could just get the base and get your uh, non-hybrid version, which this car is uh, offered in. So the design and the styling of the Grand Highlander. I really like this boxy SUV look that they have going on. The hood is almost completely flat, comes into this notch into a massive luxurious looking grille i really like the headlights they didn't go overly uh, crazy with this design it's pretty conservative but it looks classy it looks nice it looks timeless let's go ahead and take a look at the side profile so as i mentioned this is the platinum so you get the platinum wheels which look pretty fancy we have uh, some massive doors talking about how much space you have which we'll take a look at in a second three quarter view tells you that this is indeed a Grand Highlander and not a regular Highlander. This roofline, unlike the Highlander that kind of drops off, keeps it up, giving you all that extra headroom in the third row seat. Coming into the back, you have the lettering Grand Highlander spread across the hatch. And this particular Grand Highlander is a hybrid max powertrain. So let's go ahead and pop the hood and talk about the powertrain. All right, under the hood of the Toyota Grand Highlander with the hybrid max powertrain. So this is the most powerful version of a Grand Highlander that you can get. This powertrain makes a combined net horsepower of 362 horsepowers. Um, now you have the option of getting this engine without the hybrid assist, the 2.4 liter turbo by itself, which would uh, make somewhere in the ballpark of 260 horsepowers. And you can also opt for a hybrid version, a regular hybrid, an NA or naturally aspirated version of this, which uh, is a different engine. It's a 2.5 liter and it's a non-turbo and it's attached to a CVT transmission, uh, unlike this car and the base and that would give you uh, about 240 horsepower. So it goes down on horsepower, but up on fuel economy. All right, so on this car, I'm gonna start my interior review with the back seat because that is majority of the reason why you would buy one of these, right? So in the Platinum Highlander, the back seat is a fantastic place to be. You have this gorgeous leather interior and, hear me out, cooled seats and heated seats in the second row, which is absolutely bonkers. It's sweet. I mean, a few years ago, you couldn't even get rear heated seats on certain cars. You couldn't even get front heated seats. And now, all over the place. So comfort is definitely there. You have your vent up there. We have a manual little sunshade right there. And speaking of the third row, I'm going to go ahead and hop back there and see the space over here. All right, let's see. Yes, we're going to go ahead and just completely close this off. And I have about four fingers of legroom behind this seat, which is very comfortably placed, as Nigel's gonna show you guys. So definitely pretty comfortable, not bad at all. And um, headroom's not compromised either. So I'm about 5'10", I fit back here just fine. Maybe taller adults would have a little bit of a tough time fitting back here, but no complaints. I could sit back here for a, a long road trip. You also get your personal USB-C little ports on both sides so you can charge your devices. All right, let's take a look at the storage space in the Grand Highlander. And of course, Platinum comes with a electric lift gate. So this, unlike a lot of your smaller third row SUVs, say maybe a 4Runner equipped with a third row, still leaves you with a pretty good amount of storage space instead of sticking the seats right up against the tailgate when they're up. And if you need more storage, perhaps you can drop these seats. There we go. If I can manage to get it done. I am a pro, trust me. You get plenty of extra storage back here. And a bonus point, these third row seats indeed recline. So if your third row passengers need more room, they can't even do that. 
All right, and now to the business end of the Grand Highlander, the interior, which is super sweet. It follows the new Toyota design uh, language on the interior as well. You have your massive 12-inch uh, display, digital gauges, very similar to the Camry hybrids gauges. Um, you have your wireless charging pad, cup holders, pretty good center console storage. Take a look at that. Grand Highlander key. And while we're down here, you can see that this car is pretty serious about off-roading because you have rock and dirt mode, mud and sand, snow mode, and it even has like a little crawl control. So if you look in the gauges, you can uh, actually control. There we go, rock and dirt, look at that. You get your <laughs> mud and sand, different graphics of your Grand Highlander going over some rocks. Pretty cool. Infotainment, as always, is super responsive. Toyota's new infotainment is absolutely fantastic. Sounds great. The JBL audio in this car is very nice. And uh, aside that, I really am anxious to get behind the wheel of this hybrid max powertrain. So buckle up, have a seat. Let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. All right, driving the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. And this is the hybrid max powertrain. So as I mentioned, this comes with the 2.4 liter inline four, which is turbocharged. And on top of that, it has the hybrid max system. So for uh, a combined horsepower, this car is good for 362, which is pretty impressive. For the size of it, definitely moves, definitely gets down and puts the power down. So this particular Grand Highlander as spec is right on their uh, $60,000 which isn't bad, but the Grand Highlander starts in the 40s. So the same engine without the hybrid powertrain. So you could get the 2.4 liter. Uh, it would make, I believe, 276 horsepowers, but it would be a lot cheaper, but also not get as good as a fuel economy or be as quick as this one is. This car is genuinely quick. For its size, it's great. Whereas the regular hybrid version comes with a 2.5 liter uh, naturally aspirated motor making 240 something horsepower. So it goes down on power compared to the base model, but it goes up on economy. So if you want the maximum fuel economy, the regular hybrid is the car for you. The hybrid max focuses on uh, more delivering or using the hybrid powertrain to power the car forward and make all that 362 horsepower. Oh yeah, all 362 horsepowers coming together. Gets up and goes pretty quick. Not gonna lie, for a seven seater, or I guess in this case you have captain chair, so six slash seven seater, but this thing moves. And of course it has Toyota Sense 3 adaptive cruise, so you can uh, be comfortable in this thing. And uh, especially on the highway, this adaptive cruise is a lifesaver. Definitely, it steers for you, it stops for you, um, it does all the good stuff, and it also watches your eyes to make sure you don't get distracted. Unavailable soon, take control. So you have to have your hands on the wheel, and you have to also not be distracted, like if I'm just staring at Nigel, Let's see what happens. Boom, driver in, in attention detected, look forward. So Toyota's watching you, you better be watching the road. This thing actually makes good power. Also, the four banger, it's not the, it's not the worst sounding four banger. No. I don't mind it. No. So this is a Grand Highlander Platinum after all, so you have everything in here. Memory seats, you have heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats. Um, what else, what else we got here? I mean, massive panoramic roof. It pretty much goes all the way, it stops right before the third row. Man, this thing, zero to 60 on this, I think is like in the sixes. It's pretty quick. It's not bad at all. So the Grand Highlander is geared towards somebody that needs more space, you know. The Highlander already is a semi-spacious SUV, but if you need a very comfortable third row, that's the main focus of this car. 
Um, now, there are smaller Toyotas that have third row. Um, also, there's smaller uh, Lexus products. There's smaller vehicles that nowadays have grown big enough to earn a third row seat. Some of them, though, aren't very permanent or they're not made for adults. They're, uh, the third row in this car can fit anyone just fine, even on a longer road trip. It doesn't get exhausting back there. With all that being said, let me know if you guys have a Highlander in mind. If you're shopping for one, which trim you think is the right one for you. Also, what else are you looking and cross-shopping against the Grand Highlander? Um, there's a lot of stuff. The Lexus TX looks pretty enticing, especially a lower trim TX. Compared to this, they're getting close in price. Um, there's also, you know, Kia Telluride, things like that, things of that nature. There's a bunch of seven-seaters on the market now in this segment. But with all that good stuff, this video is over. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace out, and I'm out.